Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. I'm Daniel Steele, Director of Communications at Southville. And on behalf of Southville International School and Colleges, I would like to extend a warm welcome to all of you. We appreciate you taking time off from your busy schedules to join us today. And we hope that you will find this webinar to be both fruitful and engaging. Just to give you an overview of what we'll cover in today's webinar, our speaker, Honored Senator Pia Cayetano, will be discussing the role of sports, physical education, and values development in nation building. The objective of this webinar is to find relevance with sports, physical education, and values development in both community and nation building, apply the values learned from physical education, national service training program, and leadership courses into our daily lives as students, educators, family members community and organizational leaders, reawaken or restore values such as servant leadership, respect for diversity, compassion, patience, and professionalism that have been lost or lain dormant in an age of commercialism, cutthroat competition, technology, and of course, the pandemic. Allow values to be a moral compass and foundation particularly in this time of rapid change and uncertainty. I am immensely pleased and honored that our guest speaker is sharing her invaluable insights and time to help us learn more. After her keynote speech, we will have a question and answer segment where you will have the opportunity to submit text questions to today's presenter to further discuss and clarify what we've learned. Let us commence this auspicious occasion with a prayer. Please join us in a moment of silence to give reverence to our Lord. The invocation will be led by Elizabeth Hope Soberan. Hello, good morning, everyone. Um, I would like to start this prayer. Almighty and ever loving God, we glorify and thank you for the many blessings that you have showered us. Thank you too for allowing us to meet today as SGEN community and beyond to learn more on the role of physical education and values education in nation building. May you extend your divine wisdom to our speakers that may be more blessed as they continue to carry out the mission that you entrusted to them. Bless all of us participants in this webinar that we may be able to absorb the vital information and that after we may go out and spread what we learn in the spirit of your love and generosity. We ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, amen. Together we now pray the Estian invocation. Amen. Um, Liza, I don't think we're doing the SGEN invocation, so sorry about that. But thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> thank, thank you so you. much. <laughs> um, all right, let's go ahead and uh, thank you so much again for, for that beautiful invocation. Um, let's move on to continue with today's program. Uh, we are pleased to have a message from our school president. Let us please welcome Dr. Jocelyn P. Tizon for the welcome remarks. Welcome, and thank you for joining us in Southwest webinar on the topic, the role of physical education or sports and values education in nation building. I find this event inspiring and remarkable for several reasons. First, I strongly believe that sports has an important role to play when it comes to nation building with its ability to bind people together and develop a feeling of patriotism and unity. We are honored by the presence of our Honorable Senator Pia Cayetano, the Senate's Pinay in Action, who will share her insights with us today. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the organizing team led by Coach Lisa Bulay for bringing us together in this important event. I'm sure everyone can remember the rare sight of long stretches of empty roads in Metro Manila whenever Manny Pacquiao fights as everyone is glued on their televisions to support the Pambansang Kamao. 
I can recall shouting, we did it! When the Philippines bagged the overall championship of the 2019 Southeast Asian Games after 12, 14 long years. Indeed, sports can make a small and developing country such as ours gain international recognition and pride for its people. Sports and physical education likewise help in elevating qualities like discipline, determination, teamwork, and pursuit of excellence in the psyche of the nation. The values that are instilled as part of the sports experience include grit, fairness, inclusion, and respect. Athletic activity is the only way to systematically and continuously develop these sporting values which have an immense impact on our quality of life and future successes. We are acutely aware, however, that athletic talent cannot prosper unless we increase our level of physical activity and sport participation. The types of food that we now consume, the many hours we spend in front of our computers and television sets and our sedentary lifestyle are making us unhealthy and unproductive. We need to rediscover the joy of movement and physical activity if we want to take the next step to where we want to go in terms of sports and physical fitness. Thus, we have come here today to reaffirm our belief in the importance of physical education and sports for positively affecting values and bringing people together. Moreover, we agree that the government and the academe must form a partnership to provide opportunities to Filipinos to be physically active. Our sincere hope is that this webinar will spark an enduring flame of passion for sports and physical fitness and lead our nation to be healthier a critical dimension in uniting and developing our country as we weather this pandemic. Thank you and mabuhay. Thank you very much, Doc Joe, for those wonderful words. Your leadership continues to inspire all of us at Southville to greater heights. Let's move, let's continue. And now on to our main event. We're fortunate to have our esteemed guest speaker who will be presented by our college director. May we invite Dr. Maria uh, Felmasi Tria to give us an introduction of our keynote speaker. Okay. Our speaker this morning is a mother, a lawyer, a politician, and a triathlete. She was a former UP varsity player, UAAP champion, and captain of the Philippine women's volleyball team. Her various sports experiences are proof of how she values the crucial role that sports and physical education can play in promoting positive values and character building among the youth, and the unique power of sports to cultivate national pride, unity, and development. She's the author of The Measure, Establishing the National Academy of Sports, which the president signed into law earlier this year. She has been a leading advocate for Filipino athletes and has pushed for government support for sports programs, facilities, and events, including the successful staging of the 30th Southeast Asian Games last year. She's currently the chair of the Senate Committee on Sustainable Development Goals, Innovation and Futures Thinking, and Committee on Ways and Means, leading efforts to craft strategic policy to equip the country for the new normal and the possible futures that lie ahead. Southville is beyond honored and excited to welcome the Senate's Pinay in Action, Honorable Senator Pia Shram Cayetano. Hello everyone, good morning. Let me just set up my slide presentation.
I, I couldn't share it because your screen was still showing. So maybe I can share it now. Okay. All right. So let me start my presentation. Again, um, a warm greeting to all of you who are here today. This is one of my favorite topics. And so um, despite my really busy schedule, I wanted to be able to share some of my ideas and um, my passion for sports with all of you today. And uh, let me start by Hope, wishing you all, uh, not, not that you're just having a good morning, but that um, by the end of this talk, if you did not start your day with a, uh, a, a workout or, um, you know, whether it doesn't have, it doesn't really matter if it's a, um, a sweaty, high intensity workout or a calming yoga session. But my, my goal is to be able to convince all of you that you start and somehow end your day um, with some physical activity that will make you feel better and actually uh, be much, much more healthier. So you asked me to talk about the role of sports and physical education in nation building. So these are just photos of me um, enjoying the things I do. And I think that's the whole thing about sports and physical education. You have to enjoy it. So I want to start this talk out by saying that before I go to the next slide. Uh, it, of Arendelle, which you hear about uh, because we go. I think somebody has their, yeah. So um, I wanted to start by saying that uh, what's very important for me is that you love what you do. And I've had so many people approach me over the years and say to me, um, can you help me start running? How come, how do you run? Um, you know, teach me how to run. And I, I, the first question I asked them, sure, I can give you some tips, but do you want to run? Or is there some other exercise you'd rather do? Because depending on your personality, depending on your goals, um, or even depending on where you are in that time of your own your life, you are better off choosing a sport or a physical activity that works for you, that makes you wake up in the morning and excited to do it, that makes you look forward to doing it, um, that gives you you know, that sense of satisfaction and excitement. I can't, I can't um, not emphasize that enough on how important that is. So even if all your friends are doing one thing, um, let's say they're all joining the races no, and running half marathons or whatever, definitely I would say give it a try. I, I'm not going to say don't give it a try because it's hard to say you don't like it if you've never tried it. So I'll always say give it a try. But I would also say that you know, if you feel like you really like um, these games where they're scoring and, you know, you like chatting with your friends a lot and you like there having to be a lot of people there, you need people to be there for you to get up, then maybe a group sport is better for you, like something like badminton or um, nowadays there are leagues in not, not just in your schools, but also in your community um, during the summertime, you know, like volleyball. It, it really depends on what you're looking for. But if you're very disciplined, like I am, um, I can get up in the morning or get home late at night and still go out for a run. I don't need a companion. I prefer to actually be alone uh, for a couple of reasons. One is I can do it on my own time. So I don't have to wait for a specific set of time, like, oh, after work, huh, 7 o'clock or 6.30, whatever that time is. I don't have to wait for that time. And also, um, um, as a runner, I can run at my own pace. I can go slow. I can go fast. I can do whatever I want. So that's why I like to do. I like to run. Nowadays, there's also a lot of classes you can join. That day, you can just you just go to a gym. But now there are a lot of classes, and I go to rowing class. I go to cycling class. I joined this um, studio that's called F45, where there's actually a coach. And on the screen is actually another coach doing a demo, but you're still doing your own workout. So I can look at the demo and there's a coach who will correct my form and it's a class. So I get to socialize a bit, 
but at the same time i'm doing my own thing and there's since there's a lot of classes i can go to one class and jump into the next jump to another class on another day that uh, suits my schedule so there's just so many options which makes it exciting of course a lot of this is affected by covid and i'll go into that later but i wanted to start with that with just my personal take on how you have to suit your physical fitness plan to your own needs all right so um so i can't really on the left side is my picture as a volleyball player in up I can't really say that's how I started because I was into sports even as a child. My father, uh, the late Senator Rene Cayetano, was instrumental in um, getting me into sports. But even my grandmother, my mother's mom, um, into her 80s, you know, she was doing jumping jacks in her house, uh, sit-ups, and she would swim every day. So in a way, you can say it's in the genes. But it's a choice that I still make. I didn't have to try out for the volleyball team. I didn't have to finish four years of playing. It became my lifestyle. It became my passion. And on the right is a photo of me as a triathlete. And um, I don't know exactly when this photo was taken, probably um, maybe 10 years ago or so. I've been a triathlete since my late 30s. Around the same time that I became a senator, I started doing triathlon. So um, I didn't start it until... Um, I was in my late 30s, mid 30s to late 30s. And so I can honestly say that it's never too late to start. And you can Google and find um, amazingly inspiring stories about people, you know, doing marathons or triathlons in their 70s and in their 80s. So there's a lot of inspiration out there. But the point is, you know, I do what makes me happy. And by the way, as a UP player, that's when I met your coach Lisa Bulay, who has been very persistent in making sure that I get to speak here today. So that's a lot that 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 really is just, um, I guess, an example of the friendships you build over the decades. Um, obviously, as a volleyball player, I played every day and not every day, but I trained regularly with my teammates. But it's one gym and you see the basketball players on one side behind us were the weightlifters who uh, in the middle of lifting their weights, our ball would bounce on them, which really is not a safe thing. But, you know, that's just how it was back then. I don't know how much things have changed. So um, let me move on. And uh, basically, I, wanna, I want to, to emphasize that all over the world, sports is recognized as a framework for developing values and soft skills needed for responsible citizenship. That's from UNESCO, okay? So I grew up in a time where I still had a lot of classmates who said that their parents didn't allow them to do sports. Their, their parents didn't feel like it was ladylike to do sports and didn't really see the value in it. And I certainly hope, I don't really hear much of that nowadays. And so I hope that we've overcome that um, erroneous belief that sports doesn't really have anything to contribute to us because I truly believe that a lot of a lot of traits that I have as a responsible citizen as a leader I really gained from sports and I agree with this UNESCO statement that sports um, is very important for developing values and soft skills later on I'm going to dig in a little bit more on the soft skills that I that was mentioned because um, all throughout the world, I've been, I've been talking to futures thinkers. No? I chair the committee on SDG, um, innovation, and futures thinking. And one of the takeaways all, that I have on the future of education is the four C's and uh, what skills we must teach our youth. And um, critical thinking is, uh, sorry, these soft skills are really what we need to develop in the youth. So um, roughly a year ago, not quite a year ago yet, in December of 2019, we hosted the Philippine Sea Games. And I have to say, this is one of the proudest moments I've had as a Filipino because I got to see our athletes present their skills and their talent before the whole nation. As an avid supporter of athletes throughout the decades, 
I've seen how they train, how dedicated they are, how they put life on hold basically to pursue excellence and to be able to perform before your own countries, to be cheered for by your kababayan is really the least that we can do for them. And it proved that we have the capability of being number one. So I got to enjoy um, some games live. I actually traveled to Clark. Um, some of the photos here, if, the, if you see the photo of me uh, running um, with, with the three other girls, um, the girl to my, well, on the photo, the girl to the left, not the one in red sleeveless, she actually was our gold medalist in the SIA Games in heptathlon. And that's the sport where you play all these different, you throw, you run, you jump. She won gold. And I'm not sure, I can't see the picture very clearly, but I'm not sure if the other girl beside her is our gold medalist also for um, uh, the marathon. So I went there, I just visited them. I wanted to cheer them up. And they were so excited to see this brand new stadium that was built for them. Um, you know, they were just over the moon with, with joy that they had this world-class facility to train in. And it's really true. If you give them the facilities, if you give them, if you build that environment where people can flourish, they will flourish because that whole environment affects them internally. You know, it makes them excited to get up. It makes them excited to perform um, in all the positive ways possible. So yeah, so this is um, Clark, and I think I have a few more photos to share with you later, but the point is we built it and our athletes performed. Mm. They were able to give their best and show, and show the region that they were the best. Um, to dive in very quickly, no, sports um, has been um, cited to, pro to influence or to be... Um, to, be, to go hand in hand with a number of things. I think it goes without saying sports for health. Um, when you think about health and fitness, you normally think of sports. So a lot of youth, young people, and this is where um, as a school, your, your community comes in. When you get kids excited about sports, uh, you, they get hooked immediately. You know, so when they play, they play you know, football, for, football for preschoolers, and you know, they run around and eventually become a little bit more organized, whether it's baseball or football or basketball. As they get older, um, then they start understanding the benefits of sports on their health. And when they become adults, hopefully their love and passion for sports like me stayed that I now do it for health reasons. I don't do it competitively. I'm not in any team, although I am competitive a few times a year because I still join triathlons um, until this year because of COVID in March, I would do an ultra marathon in Cebu. It's an all women's and that's where I segue to sports for girls. I do this ultra marathon um, for women only. An ultra marathon for the information of everyone is anything that's beyond the distance of a marathon. So a marathon is 42 kilometers. Um, I think that's about here to UP, Quezon City. That's about the distance of a marathon, Alabang to UP or Quezon City. And um, an ultra marathon is anything longer than that. So I do an ultra marathon every, I have done one for the past few years in Cebu. I just didn't do it this year. Um, because of COVID, because it's done in March in celebration of Women's Month. Um, sports for fun. Um, yeah, it should be fun. It should be fun for all ages. And I still do it for fun. Um, I mentioned that I'm competitive to a certain extent, but really I think at this point, it's more for fun for me. I don't have the, it's more like I've been so competitive in sports over the years that I prefer to do it for fun now. And sports for, for peace. No? There are a lot of um, games and um, events that are held, not just within the country, but I know like there's like football um, for the football in Marawi that was done to really promote peace. And I know they do these things all over the world as well. So um, sports is really important now during this time of COVID. Um, health experts would recommend that uh, we, we try to exercise a few days a week. I think the recommendation of WHO is 
75 to 150 minutes a week. So that's anywhere between an hour and 15 minutes to about two and a half hours. No? So an hour and 15 to two and a half hours. So if you divided that by three, that could be you know 30 minutes three times a week, or it could be 20 minutes every day. I personally would recommend every day, especially for people who are getting started. You know why? Because I want them to become habits. And that's a whole other study on how you develop habits. For me, if you make it your habit that every day you want to sweat a little bit, you want to stretch it out, you want to move, then your body looks for that every single day. And that's how I am. My body looks for it every day. Um, my friends who are athletes like me, um, our problem is the reverse. Uh, we don't even want to take a day off because we just love move, movement. We love sweating it out. It's our distressor. So the challenge really um, for athletes is also to ensure that we get enough rest. Very important. So if we have our competitive athletes listening here, rest is very important. And that's why for me, I also take my sleep very seriously. I really try I don't sleep early, which is not something I'm proud of, but I do believe that everybody has their own body clock. And I personally have been a late sleeper ever since my college days. Um, but I do try my best not to have to wake up so early so that I get enough sleep. So, because at the end of the day, it's about being able to rest also um, and recover you know, from, the, from the work that you put out. So sports is very in, important during this time of COVID because we hear a lot of um, reports that um, the stress of COVID is very high when it comes, to the, the, I mean, the strain, sorry, the strain of COVID is very high on our mental health. And one way that you can deal with that is to sweat it out, to engage in sports or to engage in fitness activities. Sports per se, particularly group sports, would really pose a challenge these days because of social distancing. So I would say um, what I would rather emphasize physical fitness or um, just, you know, your own exercising back in your own uh, confines of your own home, which for the most of us, we, we do stay home. Even I stay home. I only go to the Senate when it's absolutely necessary. Otherwise, I conduct all my, my um, meetings right here as we are doing through Zoom and other digital um, means. So um, I wish I could show you, um, but I'm actually sitting on a, um, I don't know what to call this, but they're kind of like yoga mats, no? They're like the mats used by gymnasts. So that's where I hold my little office space, but um, below me is, uh, are like my bars, my balls, my dumbbells. And this is my workout space. So I work out here every day. I mentioned to you that I join classes online and that's very easily available. I pay a fee to join these classes because these are the classes that I like to join, but they're actually available on YouTube. If you don't wanna spend anything, you can go on YouTube. You don't need a single equipment. All you need is one important equipment and that is your body. As long as you have your body and even if you have some kind of disability, there are still a lot of things you can do. Like I've joined a session with my yoga teacher on, um, it was called something like um, sitting yoga. So like yoga stretches that you can do while you're in work sitting. And it's basically like, if you're sitting here for five hours, you know, you could go like this and like this and stretch your back all over. So there's no excuse. If you have internet access, you can find the world of fitness at your fingertips. So I highly recommend if there's any community work you also want to do is, you know, help people find the fitness classes and um, activities that they can do at home to make them healthier. It not only makes them feel, it will not only make them physically healthier, but it will make them mentally healthier. And that's one intervention that I would really recommend for you to do as a community. Um, so I mentioned earlier that um, experts all over the world speak about the four C's that the future workforce needs, and that's critical thinking, communication, collaboration, and creativity. Now, why do I mention this here? Yesterday, I gave a talk on futures thinking, no? Futures thinking for the youth, because as I said, I chair the Committee on Sustainable Development Goals 
innovation and futures thinking in the Senate. But um, I mentioned this here because some of these skills, if not all of these skills, can also be learned through sports. So people do not realize that when you are engaged in sports, all these other skills come into play to do, to do well in that particular sport. So let's start with the most obvious, collaboration, especially in team sports. It's a given that you have to collaborate. You know how you watch little kids play and then you know they're, they're shouting, pass me the ball, pass me the ball, dito, dito, whatever. And then at some point they're gonna fight and like, but mo ginawa yon? you didn't pass it to me. That's all part of collaboration and communication. So those two skills are done at an early age. They learn that so easily while at play with other kids. And as the skill level goes up, as the competition level goes up, they need to communicate more. They need to collaborate even more. And then that's also where critical thinking comes in. Um, I'm a believer that our brain is really just a computer that um, not, not just a computer, but I mean it is very similar to a computer that if you learn one skill in one um, part of your life, you can apply that same skill in other parts of your life. So early on, I said that um, I, a lot of skills I have now as a leader, a leader of this country, I learned as an athlete. So the hard work and perseverance that I learned, I really learned in the UP gym. I was an athlete in high school, but the level of um, performance wasn't that high yet then. Now, now it can be very competitive. During my time, it wasn't that competitive. And I was the first graduate of our school, um, San Beda Alabang, which is near you. And being the first graduate, of course, that even though I can say that our school put a lot of emphasis in sports, they really did, the level of competition wasn't that high. And yet I got my introduction and my love of sports through that school. But it was later on in college in UP that I realized, wow, the level of competition here is so high. The demands on me as a person, as an athlete were so high. And that's where you have to think about critical thinking. Your skill is good enough such that you need to include critical thinking to figure out how you're going to win that game. You know, it's not just a matter of strength. It's not just a matter of speed. How do you use that? How do you use that strength, that speed, that agility um, to outsmart your opponent? So that is critical thinking. And creativity is there too. Um, when you said, I don't know if we have coaches here listening other than Coach Bulay, but um, um, when you train your students, a lot of creativity comes into play, even for regular teachers. Kids now are totally distracted by, I mean, the, the game has changed because of digitals. You know, it's not as easy to teach kids the way you used to teach them because they have access to digitals that just make it so much fun, so much color, so much movement, staring at the phone. That if you teach in a, in a, in a monotone, you know, with a whiteboard or a chalkboard, they're really gonna fall asleep. So that's where creativity is really needed even with the teachers to get their lessons across. So don't forget this, the four C's. I always think of it nowadays. Um, and then let me just tie it in quickly to the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. As I said, this is the committee I chair in the Senate, and it is my job to work with the different agencies of government to ensure that 1 to 17, um, we, we target, we, we take the necessary steps to reach those targets. So you will see that um, number three is good health and well-being, which ties into spe specifically what we're doing now. But in many ways, the other, um, the other um, goals are also relevant or affect our being able to achieve good health and well-being. Because if our environment isn't clean, no? if, if the kids who are going out for a run have to inhale uh, the smoke coming out of the exhaust, uh, dirty smoke coming out of the exhaust of tricycles or jeepneys, well, then that also affects their health, no? and so on and so forth. So just to let you know, one of the goals that is, that is very important to me is goal 11 and 12. 11 is sustainable cities and communities. So for me, it kind of encapsulates everything. Um, when you think of your sustainable city, then that's when you think there's no poverty, there's good health, there's food on the table. Um, we use sustainable transportation and so on. 
and 12 is responsible consumption and production, which I hope your school is also taking serious um, notice of. This is uh, being able to reuse um, our packaging material. So, you know, yung mga pang bao, now that kids are at home, I, I hope that we are consuming less, but maybe you can remind everyone because everybody's also ordering takeouts. And uh, there are, there are um, um, uh, restaurants or takeout places that choose to use uh, reusable. So it's a worthy expense for us. And again, this affects athletes because when we go to our games, when the games resume, nandun yung mga baunan, di ba? So what I do, because I graduated from being a player myself um, after how many decades, two decades, I think, my daughters became players in the UP women's football team. And so I would bring food and I would bring it in Tupperwares so that the kids wouldn't have to, you know, instead of buying individual packed foods, I would bring a whole Tupperware and then um, they would eat it from their plates so that we would also be consuming less um, disposables. So anyway, here's just a quick, I'm about to wrap up, but these are some of the laws and the bill spending. Student Athlete Protection Act, which is the um, law that I fought for, um, the champion here was a UP swimmer named Mikey Bartolome, who wanted to um, swim for UP. She wanted to study in UP, but she graduated from USP High School. And at that time, they had this rule. They, the UAAP made up a rule that if you come from a high school that has a college that participates in a league like UAAP, you have to wait for two years before you play for that college, unless your school, your high school releases you. So they wouldn't release her. So we had to come up with this law that says you can't do that. A high school graduate can go to any school they want to go to, of course, if they're accepted there. And her high school cannot, her or his high school cannot say you cannot go to that school. That was to me is really a violation of, of the rights of this student athlete. And then our newly passed law is this um, National Academy for Sports. If you recall the picture I showed of Clark, um, that's where we built that stadium. And um, the dorm or the facilities where the athletes from around uh, Southeast Asia stayed, that will be the dorm, uh, that will be part of the facilities that uh, the student athletes, uh, the national student, uh, the national team, um, the players will be able to stay in um, if they go to this high school, the National Academies for Sports. And then there are other bills um, pending here, which I won't talk about at this point. So um, these are just like some of the activities that I do personally. It's actually outside of my work as a senator, but I include it because I feel that I need to live a life by example. And I also need to do what I can to reach out to kids all over the country to give them access to sports. I feel blessed that I live in Metro Manila. I was able to go to the University of the Philippines. My daughters went to the University of the Philippines. Growing up, they have access to good coaches in their grade school, in their high school, in the community in Alabang where I live in. And so I wanted to make this available also to kids all over the country. And so I have this Pinayin Action Cup in the Visayas in Mindanao. I even bring the UP team there so that the, um, the provincial players can get to play with a top-notch um, varsity team. And then we go also all over the world to do clinics on um, uh, running, triathlon, um, football also. And um, I do seminars with coaches as well. And I have a group of kids. Uh, they're called the Daanghari Kids. If there's any of you who want to volunteer or do something with them after COVID, uh, these are the kids, they live, in, they live in the Las Piñas and Cavite area. And I discovered them about 10 years ago. Their actual, the actual name is the Anghari Barefoot Running Kids. Because when my friends and I were training for a triathlon, we noticed this group of kids just running on the side. And the one coaching them was also a kid. And uh, they were barefoot and this kid had a whistle and he was, you know, uh, making the kids do sprinting. So now I have... Um, a full-time uh, trainer who stays with me, um, co he, coach, he meets them on weekends and he coaches them, but they haven't seen each other since COVID, although we've delivered, you know, we've tried to assist them through food packs and the like. 
they come from um, less uh, fortunate families. So we're, we're, there, we're there to assist them throughout the year. And of course, in Taguig, we also have, I also assist our programs there. My brother, Lino, who is also a former UP volleyball varsity, is now the mayor of Taguig City. So that's it, guys. Take note of my um, social media accounts. I'd love to hear from you. I, I try to respond um, when I can, um, but I do, if you want inspiration on in sports, I try to uh, post my photos, even my photos working out here at home. Um, Instagram is where I'm very active on and also Facebook, Pia Kayatano. It's not that hard to, to forget if you uh, know my name. So that's it, guys. And I'm very open for questions. If you want to, you know, have a short q and I'm, I'm game. Thank you. Thank you so much, Honorable Senator Pia S. Cayetano, for that very insightful presentation. Your advocacy for physical education, sports, and values education is a credit to the nation. And of course, your own personal experiences clearly show just how far drive and passion for physical fitness can take you. Um, before we do the Q&A segment, we'd just like to do a very quick photo op with the, with the uh, folks who are here in Zoom with us. Uh, we will do two batches really quick. So everyone um, who is in the management side of things, please go ahead and turn on your cameras. Now is the time. We'll just take a, like 10 seconds for this. So everyone, please do turn on your camera. We will switch to a gallery view so we can do a quick photo op. Okay. I will count down. Five, are people doing it? We've got a few, okay. Uh, Sam or Monching, um, I think you might need to switch to a gallery view or how, however we need to do this to get the full photo up. Okay. All right, uh, I guess everyone, please go ahead and say cheese so we can get the screenshot here. All right, thank you so much to the management team. You can go ahead and turn off your cameras. And now for the webinar team, please go ahead and turn on your cameras. Okay, and say cheese. All right, thank you so much, Senator. Uh, thank you all to all of the uh, participants here joining us today. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the Q&A segment. Um, I think we have a few audience submitted questions. Uh, let's see what our first one is here. What is question number one? It is how should we as educators reinforce the value of PE sports and values education to support community and nation building during the pandemic. So the focus is on how to support the importance of physical education during the pandemic, right? During the pandemic. That's, That's right. Yeah, well, as I mentioned, um, I think unless you are a physical fitness advocate or like me, you know, it's just my passion. I don't have a background in physical fitness, but it's my passion. Um, some people, a lot of people will tend to forget how important physical fitness is at this time. So I really suggest that it becomes part of the daily conversation. You know, when you have your class, you ask your students, I don't know how, how um, regular PE is built into a regular curriculum, but um, I'm assuming it's once or twice a week at most. But I truly um, advocate that every, whether it's the homeroom teacher or any teacher, just say, Hey guys, you know, get up and stretch, you know, let's all do, let's all do um, um, a few stretching and, and um, uh, jump around, especially for young kids. I have a 10 year old. I, I kept mentioning earlier, my, my older girls who, who went to UP and one is still in UP, but my youngest one is only 10 and he has a lot of energy. He needs to get up and run around. And thankfully I have a living room that I pretty much converted into a fitness studio because I actually have two of my daughter's teammates living with us. So it's like a fitness studio here. But then my son actually has his indoor football that happens here also. And so I just really suggest that, you know, you just remind people daily how important this is. Have you moved around? And for people who have not made it part of their lifestyle, like I was going to a fitness studio daily before quarantine. 
so I'm used to getting up and, and getting in my, in my fitness, you know, wear, my active wear and going to a studio. But so I just had to convert that to going downstairs from my bedroom to my, my um, living room to do that. But for those who have never made fitness a regular part of their life, it's still a great time to change. If you tell them that, you know, you can fight COVID or for that matter, if you, if you look at the number of sicknesses out there, you still don't want to get it at the time of COVID, right? So you want to tell people that to minimize the chances that you have to visit the, the doctor anyway, you might as well get fit. And, you know, there's a lot of easy ways. I mean, unless somebody asks me the next question on how to do that, my point is get people doing it by reminding them regularly. And, you know, there's, there's actually five-minute videos on YouTube. Five-minute um, I have on my on my YouTube, five minute, um, five minute cardio exercise, five minute arm workouts, five minute leg workouts. It's all over there. And I even made my own version for people to look at if they, if they want to do that. And it's nice to do the five minutes. I got that habit from my daughter because she would see that I would work out in the morning and then all throughout the afternoon up to nighttime, I would be like this, you know, working. And she's like, mom, five minutes, five minutes. So we would stand up and do a five minute, you know, just to get my blood flowing and de-stress me for a few minutes. So I hope that answers your question. It does. Thank you very much. Uh, let's move on to question number two. Question two. It is so hard to get and stay motivated when we're all stuck at home. What do you recommend to build and sustain motivation for physical fitness? Um, I understand. I totally understand. And I have had people who tell me, um, I know you can't relate to this because you love sports and fitness. And that's not true because I don't wake up every single morning that I want to exercise. I mean, there, there are days, in fact, I'm not a morning person. So honestly, every day I wake up and I'm like, can I just stay in bed? Seriously. So I have to motivate myself to get up. But the minute I'm up and I see my, my, my um, well, anyway, let me go quick into the tips because that's how I motivate myself. Set it up, set it up in such a way that all the cues for you that you need to do your daily fitness are there. So if you have to set up your shoes by your bedside, your shoes should be ready. If you have your workout gear, it should be ready. So when you wake up, there's no excuse. It's there. It's calling you. They're ready. Put it on. Um, and then the area where you work out. And even if you say, oh, I just live in a condo, no problem. But you have a specific area where you work out. And if you have your, your YouTube favorites there. Um, and again, there's so many out there. There's high intensity. There's bar, B-A-R-R-E. For those who you know, want to gradually get into it. Um, I like bar on the days that I'm really tired. People think that I'm always you know, high intensity. But no, bar is a little bit more subdued there's bar there's pilates there's yoga there's so much out there and i would be very happy to you know share some of my favorites i can send it to coach lisa bulay um, if you want but then if you're willing to spend um i actually spend for classes so um i don't want to say this is not an endorsement because technically i am endorsing it because i do love it um i go to f45 it's a 2000 a month. You can go every day. You can go twice a day. And I do go twice a day sometimes. And that's value for money. That's high intensity. Um, but you can, you know, go in slowly. And I go to Saddle Row where there's cycling, there's rowing. I do have a, I, I have to say, I do invest in that when people say, well, you're so lucky you have those stuff. No, I'm not lucky. I worked on it. I invested in these things. I actually had a bike before I had a dining table, okay? So if you look at my priorities in life, um, I think it's very clear until my mom said one day, this is in my own home, my mom said, my dad had passed away. And my dad said, Pia, your dad would have like, would have wanted you to have a dining table. So uh, I'm setting aside money he left behind for you to have a dining table. But I had a bike before I had a dining table in my home. So that just goes to show those are my priorities. Um, it's not that I didn't eat. No, I just didn't eat on the dining table. Um, so you have to set it out. You have to set it out. Lay it out so that it's visually there. And then I would say get the class is great because then you have this community of people, even your coaches, they look for you. They know you showed up. Um, but if you don't want to spend for it or you, even, you can't afford it, then just have a buddy. Just look for somebody. Hey, let's do this YouTube class together. You know, you know you're doing it together. 
um, and and it becomes more fun and you become accountable to someone. So that's basic the basic tips on motivation. All right, thanks very much. <laughs> uh, let's move on to question number three. Uh, and just double checking, Senator, I know you have a very busy schedule. Do you have time for a couple more questions? I'm good for about eight more minutes. Okay, fantastic. Um, our third question is, how has your training in sports and physical education prepared you for your job as a lawmaker? How have they in any way influenced your work? They've influenced my work tremendously. I mentioned earlier, and I will emphasize again, that the discipline I have and the patience that goes into um, the day-to-day -day work, because by the time I start my work, uh, let's say lawmaking, the day you start, you have an interest in making a law, till the time you complete it, that can be a long time. It could actually be years. And you can lose interest, you can lose motivation, um, some other important things can come up. But through sports, I've learned to persevere. I really have. And a lot of patients, I've, I've had people tell me, wow, you're so patient. And I believe I developed that through sports because um, when I was playing volleyball for UPIN, the rules were a little bit different. They didn't have, we had side outs, which means you, nobody gets a point. And so the games can just go on and on. If nobody's, if the person serving is the one that the team serving makes a mistake, there's no point. So it, it can just drag on and we'd have three hours, three hour games. And you can't sit there and say time out. No, the game goes on. So you have to be in your game for the next few hours. And I've learned to do that through sports. And after, after volleyball, um, I became a runner and I became a triathlete. And if you notice my game, the, the, my sports of choice are endurance sports. So these have, these have really helped that, that mindset that I need. And it's very valuable for, for um, young athletes and students. I, in, I, I, I've seen that so many athletes are performers in school. Um, um, in UP a few years ago, she's now a med school student, the captain of the volleyball team graduated summa cum laude. And I have nieces um, in the US who were captains of their varsity teams and they also graduated with honors. My daughters are very good students while being players. So I'm telling the athletes and I'm telling the teachers that sports really frames that mind that, you know, and I tell the kids how serious you are in sports bring if, if they're more sports lovers and I tell them bring that to the school and the other way around um, because I feel like the brain just works in one way and if you can just shift um, uh, use the same skill in whatever role you're playing or whatever whatever you're doing it works the same way okay that's fantastic um, let's go ahead and move on to our fourth question which is how can we inculcate values in today's youth when their own leaders seem to disregard values in both public and private? Yeah, that, that's an issue. And I can only speak for myself. Um, we need to be able to, we have to be accountable for our own self. If, if values is important to you and it is important to me, then I'm accountable for myself and I need to step up my game to ensure that in every aspect of, um, my life, you know, I can be something that these young kids can look up to. And that's as far as it can go, because I cannot be responsible for this next person sitting next to me. So, you know, we can't fall apart and say, ah, oh, why are some people so disappointing? Because people will disappoint it. I mean, you can read the Bible and uh, that's how it is. There were kings and there were, there were leaders who, who um, should not have been. But um, it boils down to being accountable for yourself. And um, I know young people and even adults who get, who get frustrated. Um, but I always say, you know, there, no, there's, first of all, there's no perfect person. And the one thing you can do is be accountable for yourself and be the best leader that you can be in your sphere of influence. Okay, that's great. Um, I think we're on to our last question. If we have it prepared here. Um, do you feel that sports scholarships can benefit student athletes from any background? And do you think schools and clubs should support this around the Philippines? Yes, my answer is definitely yes. In fact, I have a very inspiring story. Um, one of the girls who lives with us, uh, my daughter's teammate, we were, we were chatting about um, 
graduation because graduation happened a few weeks ago. And um, this girl is actually taking her second course in UP now. And I said, oh, I remember your graduation. I remember you, you know, putting on the sublight, it's called the sublight and having your photo taken. And she said, yes. And I said, um, and we were talking about how my father influenced me uh, to go to UP and how I influenced my daughters. And I was asking her, who influenced you to go to UP and to join the football team? And she said, um, there was a coach who came to their training when she was in high school and said that, you know, you should consider going to UP. Um, there's, there's kids from all walks of life there and it'll give you a great college education and you'll be able to play. And she said she never even thought of going to college. You know, she comes from a very, uh, very humble background and college, I don't, I don't know if there were even other kids who, in her family who went to college, but she didn't even think she would go to college. And here she is, um, she finished her first course and she's on to a next, her next course. And um, that's just an example of, of what scholarships can do. And I have been um, fighting for, for more, more benefits for these kind of scholars because it evens out the playing field. It allows um, kids with other skills to get into college and to maximize their potential using that first skill that they have, which is in athletics or sports. And then it opens the doors of college and a world um, before them. All right, thank you so much for that. It's amazing, the impact of physical education in sports. Um, I think we're all out of time for questions today. Thank you so much for taking the time with us. Um, is there anything else you'd like to mention uh, before I let you go today? No, I'm good. I'm happy to have these opportunities. Maybe a reminder that, yeah, if you can remind people every day to move, you know, even if it's just walking in place, whatever. And I said, YouTube is there. We live in a time where there's no excuse, actually. But you have to find what motivates you to do it yourself. You can't do something that motivates somebody else. So on that note, thank you very much for this opportunity. And I hope I leave, I leave you all with inspiration to get fit, to stay fit, and influence the other people in your life to also be fit. Thank you very much, Senator. Uh, before you go, uh, everyone just turn on your cameras and give a quick wave to the Senator. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time today to join us. We are right. very, very grateful. Thank Hope you, to everyone. Bye. Have a nice day. Stay healthy. Stay safe. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Uh, before we end the webinar, uh, I'd just like to remind all of the SGEN participants to please accomplish the evaluation form that is going to be sent to your SGEN emails. We do appreciate all of your comments and suggestions as we look to improve our services. To our outside guests, we're delighted that you've explored today's topic with us. We hope you'll join us again for future webinars and events. I'd like to acknowledge all of the physical education, national service training program, and leadership courses faculty for helping to develop this webinar. I'd like to single out a few exceptional contributors. Of course, Coach Maria Eliza Ulai, uh, she's the webinar chairperson, as well as Ms. Belen Mandan, the head leadership course for college, Ms. Noli Duran, the head for NSTP, the faculty, including Anna Villaruz, Christoph Braza, Mariel Palino, Eric Quintana, and Lisa Jimenez. And then special thanks to our webinar team, including Sir Monchin, Sam, Mark, and Teacher George. And the PR team, Elise, Charm, Burley, Roman, and Adrian. And of course, thank you again to our special guest speaker, Senator Pia Cayetana, for sharing her insights and taking the time to answer our questions despite her very busy schedule. Thank you to Ms. Liza Silverano for delivering the invocation and to our school president, Dr. Jocelyn Tizon and college director, Dr. Maria Thelma Citria for joining today's webinar. This concludes today's webinar. On behalf of Southville, I'd like to thank each and every one of you for your participation. I hope that this webinar will positively impact your outlook despite the pandemic. Again, I'm Daniel Steele, and I wish everyone a safe and fruitful day ahead. Thank you for attending today's Southville Life webinar. See you next time.